six foot difference.
to see him. And I, I really believe it's coming soon. Very soon. Yes.
We're going to sing a song, Thanks to Calvary. I want you to listen to the words because it really means so much. Praise the Lord this morning for all the goodness of the Lord. Amen. It's wonderful. And uh, we are so thankful for you to be here this morning. Thanks to Calvary, we uh, don't have to be the people that we were. Amen. Uh, we, w- we don't have to be in darkness. We don't have to be uh, bound by that of sin. So we want to say thanks to Calvary. We enjoyed that song so very much. Amen. Uh, I want to preach to you a message this morning that uh, perhaps is a different way of looking at something that you already know about. We learned it from Sunday school a long time ago. This is a story that we always tell our children, but we never really appreciate for ourselves. This morning, I want to preach to you about a message that is entitled, It Ain't ain't over till it's over. Amen. It ain't over till it's over. And I, I want to tell you today, you know, you see people that seemingly have nothing going for them. They seemingly have nothing that they can do to get out of the situation that they're in. They are stuck in a bottomless pit. Their lives just continuously lose after lose after lose. And then they die. My friend, I want to tell you something today that God has got something that he wants to say to you. And it's simply this. It ain't over till it's over. 
And no matter where you are right now, no matter how deep into the valley you are, no matter how discouraged you may be, no matter how dark the night may be in your life, I want to tell you this morning that God said that it ain't over till I say it's over. Amen. I want you to know today that the devil wants to push you down. The devil wants to put you out. The devil wants to plow you under. He wants to tell you that there is no hope for your life. You may be here today and you're 20 years old. You may be here today and you're 50 years old. You may be here today and you're uh, greater than 70 years old. The devil wants you to know or wants you to understand or wants you to believe that there is no good tomorrow for you and so therefore there's no hope for you. But I want to tell you this morning that God is the God of hope. Amen. He can take whether you are 10 years old and give you a wonderful life but my friend on the other end of that he can take you in your 70s and your 80s and give you the best of your life. Amen. I don't want you to believe this morning that there's no hope for you, that there's no help for you, and that there's nothing that God doesn't want to lift you up, set you on high, and you sing the praises of hallelujah that God is doing something in your life. Amen. It ain't over till it's over. Amen. Very familiar story about Samson. And Samson had uh, his hand, or God's hand was upon him, and Samson did so many wonderful things. But I'm not going to talk about what Samson did right. I'm going to talk about how Samson got to where he needed God and God was the only help for him. Amen? Now you know the story of Samson. Samson was a young man from his very birth. He was a Nazarite. He was given of God's command to rule in Israel as a judge. He was given great control and he saw victory after victory. But Samson, like all of us, went astray. Samson went off the road. Samson fell in the ditch. Samson got into some trouble. And we're going to pick it up here in Judges chapter number 16. And I'm going to start reading back up to verse number 20. And I'm going to read through verses 20 through 30. Amen. Ten verses. And read with me real quickly, if you will. Let's read with me, if you will. Judges 16. The Bible says this. The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out at this time's before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the fair, uh, Philistines took him and put his eyes out, or put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Now, howbeit the hair of his head began again after he was shaven, then the lords of the Philistines gathered him together for to offer great sacrifice unto Dagon their God, and to rejoice. For they said, Our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy, and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that led him by the hand, Suffer me that I may fill the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about three thousand men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me. Let me read that again. O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me. I pray thee only this once. O oh God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which were upon the house stood, and which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand and with the other of his left hand. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all of his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at the, his death were more than they which slew in his life. Then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Esterol in the burying place of Manah, his father. And he judged Israel 20 years. The story of Samson. The story of Samson is mine and your story. 
The story of Samson uh, can parallel us. Amen? You see, we start out uh, really doing good. We start out trying to serve the Lord. We start out doing the purpose of the Lord, all these things. But then all of a sudden, the devil comes in and he puts pride in our life. He puts uh, passion in, and he puts pleasure in our lives. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves, instead of serving the Lord God in heaven, we find ourselves sick and laying at the feet of this world. And so many people today have had their lives destroyed just like Samson in that they are someone who have been destroyed by vanity and by the emptiness of this world. My friend, I want to tell you this morning, you may be here and you say, man, I feel just like Samson is feeling. I do just what Samson has done. I, I've made some bad decisions. I've walked down a bad road. I've kind of neglected God in my life. But, I, hey, I want to go out on top. I want to go out on, on, on God's side. I want to do the things God wants me to do. My friend, this morning, this message is for you. It ain't over till God says it's over. Now, I don't know where you've been. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter where you've been. I just want you to know where you are right now is that you are in God's house and you are about to hear God speak to you and tell you that there is still a mighty work in your life that God wants to accomplish. And God said, it ain't over until I say it's over. This morning you're here to hear God speak to you as God spoke to Samson to say to you that God has put you here today to hear the words that God is speaking so that you can know that you can turn a tragedy into a triumph. That you can turn this terrible test you've been going in, that you can turn it into a testimony. This trial can be a great and wonderful victory if you'll just listen to God. God says, I've got you, and I want you, but I want to teach you some things. Amen? I want you to see. The first thing is, is that the devil will deceive you to drop guard. Look in verse number 20. The Bible says this, and she said, who's she? She is uh, Delilah. Now, Delilah, looking good. Look, De Delilah had been to the store, and she has bought everything pretty. And she'd got her nails done, she got her hair done, she got to the jewelry store and got it all done. And she looking good. And she says to Samson, Hello, Samson. How you doing, honey? You know, I want to tell you something today, my friend. That the devil is going to paint something up. He's going to pretty something up. And he's going to put something up in front of you that is going to cause you to walk away from what God has called you to do. I, I, I want you to understand this. It, this is not about Delilah. Delilah is just a symbol of all those things that so easily beset us and get us off course and get us off track and get us into the mud and into the ditch and into the valley. That's all Delilah is. She could be anybody. But she is that thing that the devil is putting before Samson to get his eyes off of God and onto the things of the world. And I don't know what your Delilah is. Some people's Delilah is pride. Other people's Delilah is pleasures of this world. Others have relationships that are negative or they have things in their lives that they do. Some drink, some do drugs, some... Uh, it's t it doesn't matter. Your Delilah is sent simply for this, and that is to deceive you so that you can drop your guard. And I want you to know that Samson, being the strongest man that has ever lived, was no match for Delilah. Amen. She looked good. She sounded good. She smelled good. I imagine she even sung good. She was all that in a bag of chips. She was all that. And Samson, though he'd been called by God, though he'd been commissioned by God, though the Holy Spirit reigned upon him in power, all these things, one day Samson's walking where he shouldn't have been walking, and he was talking to the people he shouldn't have been talking to, and all of a sudden he got turned on it and he got turned up on this girl named Delilah. And all of a sudden he goes from being a mighty warrior to being a great Christian whiner. He goes and drops off. Now I want to tell you, you know, men we have a tendency to, to look at fine women. 
Golly, bum how y'all do that. It hurts my... We, we do. I mean, come on, guys. Woo! We stop and look. We, I, I mean, some of us, when a fast car goes by, we stop and look. When somebody offers us some praise or power, we stop and look. You women, I want to tell you right now, your Delilah could be in a purse. Your Delilah could be in clothes. Your Delilah could be in your home or in your house. I, I want you to know, we've all got a Delilah, and that Delilah is there to deceive you so that you will drop your guard. But I want you to know, amen, just because you dropped your guard last week, yesterday, this morning, God said it ain't over. Amen. God said it ain't over. Every one of us has that Delilah. But God wants you to know, Delilah can be defeated. Delilah can be put down. Delilah can be destroyed. And my friend, I want to tell you that God is telling me to speak to you. That Delilah may have tripped you up, brought you down, bounded you, bloodied you, brought you to a place to where you don't even think you deserve anything. But I want you to know it ain't over because God said, I can destroy your Delilah. And I don't know what your Delilah is this morning, but I do want you to know that my God is able to destroy binds and bind. He's able to loose the prison. He's able to take the brokenhearted. He's able to take you and get you out of the world, clean you up in the Holy Spirit, and put you upon a path of righteousness. Understand, it ain't over till God says it's over. And God said, I want you not to be deceived. It ain't over. Amen? Second thing I want you to see, look in verse 21. In verse 21, the devil's going to drop you into the world of a dungeon. Amen? Look in verse 21. The Bible says, But the Philistines took Samson and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with the fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. I know a lot of Christians that they got deceived by Delilah's. And the next thing you know, they're dropped off into the prison house of the world. Amen. There was a boy over in the book of Luke. His father was a great man. Uh, but he said, Father, I want to go into this far country. I want to live a righteous life. I want to go down into the valley. I want you to understand something, that the devil will always try to drop you into a prison or into a dungeon. The devil put Samson from the mountaintop with God. He put him into the maximum security in the dungeon of the Philistines. And so many people are living their lives because they stumbled over a Delilah and the devil dropped them into a dungeon and that's where they stayed their entire life. They can't get over the hurt. They can't get over the disappointment. They can't get over the trials and the troubles. They just can't get over it. And all they do is stay in their cell day after day living in a... Uh, a dungeon of darkness, and God said, it ain't over. The devil says, I've got you. I've dropped you. You uh, you messed it up. There's no hope for you. There's no good in you. There's nothing that could ever come good in you. But God said, it ain't over. I want you to know, just because the devil has uh, tripped you up with a Delilah and dropped you into a dungeon, and God says, it ain't over. Look in verse number 22. God wasn't finished with Samson and God is not finished with you. God says that I give you life, I give you breath and as long as you have life and breath I will lead you in paths of righteousness. You are here today simply because God's got something for you and it ain't over in your life. It ain't destroyed in your life. There's goodness for your life. If you will just say God I come humbly before you. It ain't over. Look in verse 22. While Samson had been tripped up by Delilah, he had been uh, just cast out by her, turned on her, and, and all these things. And now Satan drops him into a dungeon. But God said it ain't over. He said in verse number 22, How be it the hair of his head began to grow after he was shaven. Samson's in a dungeon. He's blinded. And no doubt he hasn't been fed in quite a long time. He's done it to himself because he tricked, uh, uh, was tricked by the deceitfulness of Delilah. And he's dropped into this dungeon because he did all these things. But God said, listen, Samson, it ain't over, son. I haven't forgot you. I haven't forsaken you. 
The Bible said in Hebrews that He will never leave us or forsake us. I want you to know real quickly that, my friend, you may be in a dungeon of darkness today, and you may deserve to be there. You might have done it to yourself. We all do things like that. But I want you to understand something this morning that God is speaking to each of us individually and He's saying, it ain't over. Look what it said in verse 22. Samson's power was still there. Why? Because God allowed His power to grow in the dungeon. you say, saying, well, preacher, I, 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 I'll be in church when I get right. Pastor, I, I'll come to church whenever I, I, I start living right. Pastor, I, I, I'll come to church whenever I get things figured out. Pastor, I'll get serious with God whenever I do everything right. My friend, I want to tell you something right now. You're never going to get it all right. The Bible, Bible tells us very clearly that David was an adulterer, that Joseph was a man of pride. Amen? It tells us that we have this flesh, and this flesh brings us down. But my friend, I want you to see that God said it ain't over simply because you're in a dungeon. It ain't over. This morning, I want to encourage you that it's not over for you. God is working in your life to make you a mighty warrior for Him. You say, well, preacher, I don't see that. No, you don't. Why? Because the Bible says those that believe in God shall worship Him in spirit and truth. It is faith. Faith is knowing that God is working tomorrow. God is working today. And God is going to get me there. Faith is not that I do everything right. Faith is that I follow the Lord. Amen. You know, we got this perfection mentality that we can't do anything for God unless we're perfect at it. Amen. I'm not perfect at anything. I'm not good at anything. But one thing I do, and that is that whenever I get down and I get into the dungeon and I get depressed and darkened, I say, Lord, you are my all in all. You are my refuge. You are my fortress. You are my strength. You are my water. You are my bread. You are my rescuer. God, you are my way maker. And God, by faith, I'm going to stay with you. And what happens is that you begin to grow stronger. Look what it said. Verse 22. I want you to get this. How be it the hair of his head begin to grow? You know, we want things in 24 hours or less. We want things immediately. It took years to drop off into the dungeon. It took years to be tripped up by Delilah. It took years to get where we are, down in the dungeon. And we want God to fix it overnight. Verse 22 gives us the illustration that God works slowly and surely to see us strengthened out of the desert. Do you know how long it takes to grow hair? I, I was going to ask you, but I'm not going to. It takes months, right? You get a haircut today, you don't need another one for three or four months. It takes a long time. It's a long process. That's what God is saying. Listen, the devil's going to tell you that you've been deserted. The devil's going to tell you that you're in this dark dungeon because you deserve it. The devil's going to tell you that there is no hope for you, but it ain't over. It ain't over because I say it ain't over. It ain't over because I'm working in you. If you will give God the faith, just a small faith of a mustard seed, of a little bit of faith, if you'll just trust Him a little bit today, and then tomorrow you trust Him just a little bit more, and then the next day you trust and you stay with Him. Now, I want to tell you, in dungeons, there's rats. In dungeons, there's disease. In dungeons, there's trouble. In dungeons, there's all these things. And you're going to have these peaks and valleys in your dungeon. But you need to have faith that God said it ain't over. That God is with you. That God is caring for you. And yes, it may be painful. Yes, it may be a problem. Yes, it may be uncomfortable for you to be here today. But just know, as Samson's hair, he's working on your behalf. You can understand that God said He's not done. And He's not done with you, my friend. If He's done with you, He'll take you out. As long as you've got breath in your life, as long as you've got cognitive ability, God can use you and God can lift you and God can make you. I want you to get that hammered home to you. You are not beyond what God can use simply because you're in a dungeon today. You can be used of God. Now, first of all, the devil deceived by, by dropping Delilah in his lap. 
And then the devil drops him into a dungeon, right? But look at the third thing. It ain't over because the devil, he put him on display. Look in verses 23 and 24. The Bible said, Then the lords of the Philistines gathered about together to them a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their god. And to rejoice, for they said, Our God has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. They bring him into the Colosseum. Now here he is, bound by his hands and his feet. He's being led by a little kid, probably about Emerson's age, four or five years old, just to show how weak Samson is before Dagon. And the devil drags him through one side of the stadium to the other side of the Colosseum so everybody in the world can see how little and how worthless Samson is. My friend, I want to tell you what. There's a lot of Christians today that have been drugged through the world. And you may be in tattered clothes. You may have the externals of chains. You may have a, a bent over back where you've carried a load of trial and tribulation for so long, but it ain't over. It ain't over. I can imagine everybody there in the Philistines, everybody there in Gaza, were looking down. The Bible says that there was so full that there was 3,000 people on the rooftop looking down at this once was Christian, this once was powerful man, this once leader of uh, Jerusalem, that this once leader of Israel. And they're saying, I told you, God ain't God, Dagon is. I'm telling you this, that it ain't over. It ain't over till God says it's over. And God decides your destiny. Amen? Yet, if you listen real closely as they open the gates, and there's Samson been in that dungeon for so many days, months, or whatever. His eyes are blinded. He feels the sun, and he, you can hear the chains being drugged. You can hear the scorns of all the people around him. All of them saying, Samson's no good. God, Jehovah, is no good. We've won. There is no God. There is only one God, and his name is Dagon. Looking pretty bad for Samson, wasn't it? You might be here today, and you say, man, Pastor, if you'd known what I'd done. Pastor, you know the baggage that I've got. Pastor, you know the 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 reputation that I carry with me. My friend, I want to tell you something. God is all about reclaiming reputations. I don't care how low you've got. I don't care how low you've been. I don't care what you've done. Because the Bible says this, that he that will ask forgiveness. In First John chapter number 1, verse number 9. Amen. That if we will confess our sins, Christ is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's how great my God is. He doesn't look back at what I used to be. He looks at me what I'm going to be. And this morning I want to say to you that just because you've been tripped up by a Delilah, just because you've been dropped into a dungeon, and just because you've not been put on display by this world, my friend, I want you to know it ain't over. Because God said it ain't over. In verses 25 and 26, they go on. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry that they said, Call Samson and let's make a sport or a ridicule of him. And there they are in verse number 26. Samson said uh, he was being led in by this lad. And Samson says, Listen, would you just show me a pillar that I can prop my hand on? No doubt he was tired. He was hungry. He was weak. He didn't think he could go on just a little bit further. And this lad props him up by the two main posts, or the two main pillars of the building. Now, you don't think that lad knew anything about architecture, do you? You don't think he had read the diagram? You don't think that he had got the blueprints out and said, Now, Samson, here are the structural uh, weak points of this building. I'm going to put you between these two. God brought that to be. God said, It ain't over. They took an old, wore-out, weak, whiny man who is blinded, and this little four-year-old brings him over, and Samson, who can't even breathe, he said, listen, will you just prop me up next to a pillar? How do you think Samson got to that structural point? Because God said it ain't over. Amen? This little lad brings Samson up and he puts him, he says, okay, old man, here you go. Lean on this one. Samson reaches out and he touches this post. 
Oh. He reaches over and touches his post. Oh. It ain't over. All of a sudden, God says, it ain't over, Samson, till I say it's over. The devil will drop you, get you to drop your guard so he can drop you in a dungeon so he can put you on display. But it ain't over till God says it's over. God said this. The devil didn't see the disaster that God was about to bring on them. Amen. God was about to move. They were there. The Bible says they were merry. That means that they were uh, beside themselves, ravenous wolves. They were screaming and hollering. And they were going on. That They had won, and Samson's God had lost. But God said, it ain't over. The devil and the devil's crowd didn't see the disaster. But look what it says in verse number 28 and 29. God declares their doom. Verse number 27. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. Verse 28. And Samson called unto the Lord. We're about to get real here. You see the turning point. Samson goes from a convict to a conqueror. Right here. Verse 28. Samson called unto the Lord. My friend, I want to tell you this morning that God said it ain't over until I say it's over. And the way that you can get out of your dungeon, the way that you can get off display of this world is to declare my name. If you will call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible said in Second Chronicles chapter number 7, verse 14, that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and flee from their wicked ways, my friend, God said that there is nothing that he can't do. In Romans chapter number 8, verse 31, Paul said, we are more than conquerors through Christ because we have called upon the name of the Lord. I want to tell you today, I'm, you may be in a dungeon, you may be on display, you may have been dropped off into this uh, abyss of the world, but God said, I've got something for you. It's not a disaster, but I am going to declare it unto you that God is able. Samson called unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, remember me. Remember me. Now, God, God could have said, Samson, I gave you four chances, you're out. Samson, I, I gave you every good thing and you wasted it. Samson, you have brought a discouragement and you have brought a, a demeanor to our, our cause. You have deserted your post. Samson, you're not worthy. But then, you know what, Samson? Samson, just like me. Brother Herman, I fail the Lord every day. I, uh, Richmond, I, 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 I don't do all that I could do. I should do and I don't. I shouldn't and I do. All these things. I, there's times in my life that I bring discouragement and dishonor to God. And my friend, you know what God says to me? He says in verse 28, Call upon me and I will hear you. O oh Lord, remember me. I pray thee and strengthen me. Strengthen me. The devil didn't see what God was about to put the boom on them by bringing them doom. And how was he going to do it? Did he rain fire out of the heavens? Did he bring the earth to quiver in earthquakes? No. He touched a blind man who had turned his back upon God many years ago. God said, I am going to take a disaster and turn it into a declaration that I say it ain't over till it's over. And here it is, the Bible says in verse 29. We're getting there. We're almost there. The devil depended upon his God, Dagon. Now, you don't need to know who he is, but he's just like any other God. He was made by man's hands. He has no true power. You may be saying here today the world's pretty strong, but it's not. It's a paper tiger. It's empty. The devil has been defeated. He has no power upon you other than what you give him. Dagon shows up in verse 30. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. He said, listen, it's not about me and the king of the Philistines. It's not about me and the enemy armies of the Philistines. God, this is about you in heaven and the devil who is trying to destroy your name. 
If you make this about God, God said that he, when you glorify Him, He's going to go with you through the battle. He's going to give you the strength to overcome. He's going to put your hands where they need to be. He's going to put your feet where they need to be. He's going to put your heart in the right place. And you are going to speak these words that Samson spoke in verse number 28. And that's what it is. The devil depended upon Dagon, but God depended upon Samson and Phil and Samson. Amen? Let's get it, let's get it down to where we know. It ain't over till it's over. This morning you walked in here, maybe you were defeated. Maybe you were discouraged. Maybe Delilah had dropped you uh, on your face, whatever that Delilah is. And you wound up in a dungeon. And in that dungeon, the world put you on display. They brought you up and everybody said, oh, look at that person. He, he claimed to be this and he claimed to be that, but God failed him. God hadn't failed you. You may be down there this morning and you think there's no way out. I want to say to you, it's not over. So God says it's over. And this morning's message is all about you and all for you. It is that the devil's going to try to deceive you. He's going to try his best to drop your guard. And when he does, he's going to drop you into a dungeon. And when he drops you into the dungeon, he's going to put you on display. But that's where it ends. If you will call out unto God, the devil is going to have a disastrous day. Amen. The devil is going to have a disastrous day. Why is that? Because the devil depended upon the wrong people. You depend upon God. I want to ask you this question today. God said that he is able to do anything and everything because God's not done with you yet this morning. Would you be honest with me and just say, you know, I'm a lot like Samson. I'm a lot like Samson in that I've given up. I've gone the way of the Philistines. I've gone into the valley. I am locked behind guarded doors of this world. There's no hope for me. Would you just say this with me? It ain't over. Till God says it's over. Miss Connie, how many times have you been right at the end? And you say, Lord, there's no way I'm going to make it out of this. Lord, the devil has finally won. I'm going to give up. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to go. I'm just not going to do this anymore. Richmond, how many times have you been to the point to where you've been at the very edge of despondency and say, God, what good can come out of all of this? But God said, hold it. It ain't over. It ain't over. Why? Because I am God in heaven and my word reigns and I have all power in heaven and earth and I can change your situation if you will call unto me and you will remember me and God will strengthen you. God said, I can do this, but God can do it for you. This morning, as they get a song ready, I'm going to ask you, do you want out of the dungeon? Do you want to get away from Delilah? Do you want to be somebody that is not on display for the world to show your failure, but on display to show that God is able to overcome all obstacles? You can change your whole world simply by doing two things. Number one is by being a witness for Jesus Christ. This morning, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you here in just a second. We're going to stand and I'm going to ask you to be a witness for Christ in that you will move like Samson and you'll move and find your pillar. And it's here at this altar. Did you come to this altar? And when you come to this altar, it's God's going to reach out with your right hand with your left hand. And he's going to give you something to push against. And God's going to say, if you will follow my command, this is going to fall down and be destroyed and I will be magnified. And you'll move out of the valley. Would you stand to your feet right now? First thing I want you to do is be a witness. You do that by obedience. Remember I told you that it's little bitty steps. Little bitty steps, just like on the hairs of Samson's head. It took a while. I want to make you a promise that if you will take a little bitty step towards God, God will take big steps towards you. The Bible says, draw nigh unto God.